Oreo maker Mondelez International is on pace for its best year in its last five years. Yahoo Finance's Julia LaRoche is here to discuss. And Julia, you sat down with the CEO. Um, what exactly are they saying is kind of been the big driver for them? Well, look, uh, Akiko, if you go back just a year ago, CEO Dirk Vandeput outlined his strategic plan for the company. And it focuses on things like innovation and also nurturing their local brands as well as their global brands. Some of the well-known global brands that you and I are familiar with, things like Oreo. And um, also millennials are driving the business. So take a listen to what was the inflection point for them. The new strategy basically was a fundamental change in the way we look at uh, how our uh, financial algorithm works. Uh, in the last five years, before we started this new strategy, we were really focused on, on margins and costs and trying to drive our profit uh, from, from that angle. Going forward, we decided that we really wanted to drive uh, the profit generation through more top line, faster growth of our net revenue, invest in the brand, understand the consumer better. And, and that has really been working out for us. Uh, we, we did a number of things, increased investment, as I said, try to understand snacking behavior better and how to position our brands on there. Um, we also accelerated our innovation. We uh, started to go into alternative channels. So we did a number of things that are causing uh, our sales to, to go up quite, quite a bit this year. And so, yeah, I think from that perspective, I can say that the new strategy is working out and, and we are managing to flow uh, uh, some of that extra margin we're making to the bottom line, but also reinvesting uh, part of that. Yeah, there's so. a lot that I want to unpack there. Um, part of the strategy is focusing on, you have these great global brands, but also these local brands and you're focusing on a local strategy. I find that really interesting. So how do you do that? How is that working out for you all? So, yeah. Basically, if you look at us as a company, we have nine global brands, which represent about 45% of our sales, but then we have about 90 local brands that represent 55% of our sales. And, and so we, we tended to be only focused on those nine, and that left half of the portfolio really not, not growing. So we, what we decided is to balance this more. With the extra investment, we were able to keep the investment on the global brands, and, and invest more on the local brands. And uh, that is working out for us. Uh, the reason being because these local brands are really part of the culture. You have to go around the world and, and sort of know who, are, who our local brands are. Then you know that in those countries, these local brands are, are really sort of the taste of the nation in chocolate or in biscuits. And yeah, they like Oreo and they like some of the other international brands that we have, but they also like their Lue in France or their Cote d'Or in Belgium. And, and so the combination of the two gives us more consumers that are interested in our brands. And, and it's, it's working, working out really well. Uh, local brands were declining, they're now up. Uh, and the global brands uh, also have started to grow faster. So we're sort of hitting it on both cylinders at the moment. Now you all are focused on snacking. Um, when I think of snacking, I also think of my generation, the millennial generation. How are millennials driving your business and what sort of changes are they driving? Well, millennials are uh, very different, as, as you probably know, from, from our generation. Um, first of all, they like snacking and, and they do not think necessary in three sit-down meals. And they didn't grow up with a mother telling you that snacking in between meals was not a good mm -hmm. thing. Uh, usually they're much more flexible in when they eat, what they eat, um, and they like to do it on the go. So that, that helps us. But at the same time, they're a bit more critical about what they eat. So they are interested in um, what exactly does it taste like? Is it a delicious product? But they're also interested in what ingredients were used. Where are these ingredients coming from? They want to know what did it do for the planet? And, and was, were any, any animals hurt when mm -hmm. it happened? Or is this healthy for me? And so it's, it's a more critical consumer, I would say. And, and what they're pushing us to is to uh, make improvements in our products launch new products that are more health oriented or that have a better sustainability footprint. Uh, and so it, it is a fundamental change in what we have to do to really appeal to the millennial consumer. Right. You just mentioned sustainability and millennials pushing for that. Are you noticing that um, when people talk about sustainability that it actually is good for business? What's your perspective on that and why that's important for business? Well, first of all, consumers, millennials, but I would say all consumers are interested these days. The, the climate uh, and the environment is, is really top of mind and they're concerned about it. Um, it's good for business because it can reduce costs. If you think about it, we want to produce with less energy, less water, 
and, and that reduces our cost. So you can be environmentally friendly and reduce your cost. So that's one area that it's very important. It also, um, from an environmental pollution perspective, it obliges us to do something about plastic. Everybody's concerned about plastic and it, it's really uh, recycling, making all our, pa our packaging recycling by 2025. Um, that's something good because it, it helps the environment and if the consumer knows that, they will buy more of your product. So mm -hmm. by reducing your cost on one hand and driving more interest from the consumer on the other hand, that, is, that makes it good for business. Um, so, uh, you know, you had a chance to speak to them also about consumer behavior, and it's always interesting to talk to companies like Mondelez when we're, you know, talking about that being sort of the big driver in the economy right now. What is he seeing in terms of consumer behavior here in the U.S., and, and does he expect some of these levels that we've seen to kind of be sustainable? Well, right, yeah, that's something I asked him about because we had um, a weekend than expected read on consumer sentiment here in the U.S., and they are such a global company, so I asked him about the consumers globally and then here domestically, and look, he said, you're not really seeing um, anything that would be alarming when it comes to the U.S. consumer or even the global consumer because people are still going to snack despite political uncertainties, mm -hmm. despite geopolitical uncertainties. It's also not at a very yeah. high price point, right? Exactly. We're talking about so you're, you're talking about a huge industry, a massive industry that people are still going to go for their snacks. So it's kind of interesting to think about that it's not an area that people necessarily will pull back on just because they might not be feeling so upbeat. Okay, great. Julie LaRoche, thanks for bringing us that interview.